we do this quite often and I find it absolutely ridiculous how anxious I am for everything to go right, <laughs> technically speaking. <laughs> for me, the, the, the thing is always that the, the commissioned computer does not always <laughs> allow things to happen. So, <laughs> But I see now, I, do I see correctly, Anna, that we're live on Facebook? Uh, just one, uh, one more minute. I think people can already hear us, but I need to... Uh, to see some more things loading just to just to be all good yes now elena you can start we are live on on facebook i will be okay. sharing my screen for the the presentations also well thank you <laughs> happy that everything is all right um so let's start Happy to say hello to all our viewers on Zoom and on Facebook. Thank you for joining us in this last session of the day in Conferenza Le Scuola Penet, the second episode. Uh, for those who just joined in, we are Scuola Penet, a joint program of four Romanian NGOs, Central de Resource and Comunicare, Asociația TechSoup, Teach for Romania, and Seeding Knowledge Foundation, created with support from Kaufland and in partnership with the Ministry of Education in Romania. I'm Elena Coman from Asociația TechSoup, and I'm extremely happy and privileged to facilitate today this European conversation. You will see we have with us three amazing guests that will help us understand a bit the situation in different European countries and shed more light on how other systems handle this disruption, um, disruption of learning, I, I might say, due to COVID-19. It is a global crisis, but I think it's also a huge opportunity for all of us to learn from each other and to share solutions and to share ideas. So we're really happy to be able to host this conversation for the Romanian audience. We will have with us both two national perspectives, let's say, from two countries that we think have handled quite well <laughs> this <laughs> challenge of the disruption of learning, the Czech Republic and Estonia but also the broad perspective of the European Commission over initiatives and uh, joint European issues. So just to reserve more time for the conversation and less time for my very length, lengthy introduction, um, allow me to introduce our guest today and ask in advance for their forgiveness if I again misspell anything. Um, I'm happy to say hello once more to Miss. Lucy Gregurkova, Digital Education Specialist at the Department of Innovation and Education at the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports of the Czech Republic. Mr. Jakub Kaitman, Policy Officer with the European Commission, uh, the DigiConnect F4, a friend of ours working on digital skills and also the favorite Romanian project, Europe Code Week. Mr. Einar Vara, Curriculum and Methodology Advisor at the Foundation Innove in Estonia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, happy to have you with us in this live broadcasting from Bucharest, Tallinn and Prague. I think we are, <laughs> we are an equal number in Bucharest and Prague. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of ground to cover today because we are extremely curious basically about everything that you did in your countries. But I would like to start uh, maybe with a short overview over this last two months and how this disruption was felt in each system. And maybe Jakub, maybe we, we can go over to how it was felt at the European level. But um, I would like to start with you, Lucy because you have witnessed this two months from basically the inside of the Ministry of Education in the Czech Republic, but in a very privileged position. So what would you say were the main issues that you have addressed in your country during these two last months? Hello, first of all, thanks very much for inviting me for this discussion. I'm very excited to, to be here and to share our views. Uh, well, um, regarding your question, uh, I would just uh, like to mention that the schools in the Czech Republic were closed, I think the same date as in Romania, uh, which is 11th of March, and then um, teachers were basically forced or they had to go online and start distance learning. Um, that's why uh, that's why the the ministry uh, immediately started a web page uh, where we tried to focus on on um, digital resources, some advices, 
um, some uh, communication tips and um, uh, other other stuff. Uh, then uh, the first thing that happened was uh, to cooperate with uh, the Czech television and every day, every uh, working day in the morning, uh, they, um, they, they broke, broadcasted um, real classes. Uh, I think every subject had like a, a half an hour. So uh, these, I would, I would mention these two main issues uh, and, and activities that happened. And then of course, um, of course, other other initiatives uh, added. Uh, for example, I am really happy to to see that uh, NGO like um, Digital Check or Check Digital Digital uh, started um, also their support for schools, uh, which means that uh, anyone could uh, call to to a, to this hotline and they they helped them to to connect to to um, to do Microsoft Teams or, or Google Classroom. The same happened with, uh, with uh, the national project, uh, which did um, very, very similar um, activities and webinars. The, that is, uh, we, we found webinars very, very strong um, mean to, to spread uh, some information. Uh, but I would like to say, uh, mention the main challenge. And this is that uh, the, the scissors or the gap dispar and disparities um, widened even more than before. We have a very, very uh, decentralized system in the Czech Republic. So it's not very easy to just order something. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not that easy. So uh, we experienced that the gap uh, widened and the differences uh, are even deeper than before. So that's something we totally have to focus on. So I think that, that that's it for the first question. If you have some more, I'm happy, happy to answer something more. I, I had a small follow-up question that you have uh, quite touched upon a bit. What were basically the main support, the main type of supports that you have offered teachers during this period? You, you said a bit, you talked a bit about NGOs uh, initiatives, but what other forms of support were there for teachers in place for this period? Well, of course, uh, hotlines. The, the, this, this is uh, always uh, the most important thing to to create a hotline where people can call and and uh, ask uh, any question regarding the the crisis. This is the first thing. Then the webinars, as I mentioned, uh, which is like uh, offering some tips and guidelines. The the these. These three things I uh, I think are the, the we found the most important. Um, as I mentioned, as we have strong decentralized system, um, uh, the and the ministry or and the teachers are not subjects or or employees of the of the state, is very very difficult to to order or to be very mandatory. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, um, that's why um, the main uh, burden lies on the on municipalities and regional authorities, which are uh, the, the um, they establish the school. So that's why um, we had to, uh, we had to more um, rely on them, but still some central uh, support was uh, in process, in progress. Yeah, a lot of things to cover indeed, like all the ministries do during this period. Thank you so much. Um, well, Einar, <laughs> Estonia is basically considered to be at the front line of any digital services. And uh, from where we are in Romania, it feels like your country was born ready for this digital challenge. But how would you say your educational system handled this, uh, this quite fast change? I would say great. The, okay. uh, our teachers, yes, uh, in fact, yeah. Well, uh, if uh, we speak uh, about the crisis and, and uh, where we're ready for the crisis, for the crisis, you, you cannot be ready for the crisis as it is because you, you never know what is the next crisis and, and what is it about. But uh, you must be ready to act within the crisis and, and act adequately. So, and I think that uh, from this point of view, our, our country was, uh, was uh, ready 
and was already really uh, in good way. So, and our teachers and our our schools and, and state and parents, they took it as a as an um, challenge, not as a problem, as a challenge, as a possibility to to make some something new. And uh, uh, it was interesting that uh, within the first week, if uh, we re read uh, or if we read uh, the titles in the newspapers, so remote learning, it's exciting. exciting. So teachers took it uh, as, a, as a new possibility. Of course, now we are a little bit tired, two months within uh, the same walls. It, 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 it is uh, a little bit boring and it's a little bit uh, difficult. But uh, I have to say that, yes, we were, uh, we were ready for that. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that one country was a bit ready and I'm, I'm looking forward and hearing how were you able to prepare yourselves before and, and after. Or, and just to finish with this broad overview, Jacob, you have this like very privileged view over a lot of initiatives and joint projects that happened uh, at the European level. So what would you say were the main issues or the, what would you your thoughts are on the project that started to coagulate in this last two months? Yeah, uh, I mean, we've been in touch, of course, with, with many countries and, and with, um, with people all across Europe. And the, the first thing that comes to my mind is really that this bottom-up grassroots initiatives that, that popped up in, in many countries. Um, you indeed in Estonia, we, we've been in touch with, uh, with people from the startup community who, who gathered all the education technology startups and offered their services for free to teachers. Uh, we've been talking to, uh, to uh, people in Croatia who, who told us that, uh, that the reforms that were on paper for 20 years have happened in, uh, in, in seven days because there was no other way. Um, but in general, I think the, the, the grassroots and, and everybody tried to do their best. I, I think governments, companies, organizations, everybody's intention was really to react and to adapt to this situation. But if I, I, I was thinking when I was preparing for today, I was thinking like about the, the, the five main challenges or five main uh, things that happened. And for me, the first one was the speed of change, because it really the, the, the change had to happen immediately. I remember the days when the lockdown started to take place in many countries. And from one day to another, the teachers who were used to for many years just teach in the classroom had to move online. So it was really a lot of improvisation. Nobody was really prepared. Some, of course, were prepared better. Some, of course, not. But, uh, but I think the speed of change was the first challenge. Second. Um, it was the teachers' skills and, and the support that the teachers were getting. Because, of course, you have teachers who, who know how to use digital technologies, maybe some of them a little bit less, but still it was everything was new. The video conferencing, online exams, tests, you know, the relationship with students. So for me, this was the second. Third was the whole idea of learning online. And it, it, it all involves already the students that, and, and their parents as well. Because you, at the, now you have the situation when the kids physically stay at home, but they need to focus, they need to follow the courses, they need to do their exercises with, them, with, with their parents or by themselves. So this new reality of learning online, and, and, and what I want to stress is that what, what we understand is that this is not a temporary thing. This will last. Maybe in September, many country, in many countries, kids will go back to schools, but still there will, there will be this element that, that very likely parts of the, the whole education will happen online, uh, which will be, of course, we will need to adapt to it and we will need to be flexible. Fourth challenge that I see is, is the, um, and Lucia already mentioned it a little bit, it's the students' access to technology. Because we see that, of course, if you are a kid of a wealthy family living in a city, you probably don't have issues with broadband connection. You probably have your iPad or, or your computer. But for example, in Romania, we had a webinar two days ago and we had a speaker from Romania. And, and we actually, he said that, that there is a big, big part um, of, of people living in rural areas. And these, these people living in rural areas are also very, uh, very likely to be to not have all the access, not have the, the computers, not have the broadband. And, and then you have all, all, all these kids who live in these, you know, difficult situation, difficult conditions, 
and they they suddenly don't have how to how to connect online and and and, and use this remote learning so that is definitely a challenge and i think one, one thing which is a challenge and we are now turning it into an opportunity the last one is that we need to learn more from each other. And I think this is also the web, what this webinar is about. We need to connect ourselves. It is exactly true that each education system in each country is different and original. And as Lucia mentioned, also within the country, it is sometimes or often very decentralized and, and, uh, and um, it is, you know, there is not a one fit for all solution, but by working together, by learning from each other, and by exchanging experience as we are doing now, we will be able to, to, to improve and to really adapt to this situation. And a bottom line for, uh, for me and for us also in the commission is that, that digital skills are the new must. There will not be, there will, there, nothing will happen if we don't have the right digital skills, if teachers don't have confidence and the digital skills and um, and we we really need to work on that 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 we have the, the digital literacy and this is also what the European Commission president said when she was um, uh, joining the office last year that digital literacy needs to be a foundation for everyone and for every European and I think this is what the the situation showed definitely yeah you have touched upon a lot of things that we want to cover here and I will get back to you on this final issue on digital strategies and policies, because I, I think it's really important the the policy preparedness, let's say, of us all in terms of digital, uh, digital skills. But one thing I think is really important, and one of the reasons we are doing indeed this webinar is that I think sometimes we've, we kind of feel that every system is special and every problem in every, uh, in every system is special. But actually it might be that some of the problems that we have, other systems also had, Maybe not now, maybe several years ago, but we can learn from that. And I know that Einar has prepared basically an overview of what Estonia did during this time, which I think was will be very interesting to, to see and hear for a bit. So Einar, if you have the slides at hand, I will, we will definitely love to see them. Thank you. Before I start, I, I would... Uh to mention that you know this year was declared by our uh, minister of education and and research as a year of a digital turn turning turning year but in estonian language turning and crazy is the same word so it it yes it it uh, it was meant as a digital turning but it is a digital turning and digital crazy year so but i i will start then and uh, so, okay, uh, here it is. And uh, I, I put uh, as a title of my uh, short presentation that remote learning as collaboration, because for us, it's not only about uh, IT technology. It's not about uh, computers. It's about collaboration because uh, as we started uh, from the very beginning, our statement was that we, are, we all are in the same boat teachers, students, uh, parents, state, and uh, we all are in the same information field. We don't know how long will it be, how will it uh, develop, and so on. So only together we are able to uh, handle this, uh, this uh, situation and handle this period. So that's why uh, we are speaking about so much about collaboration. And uh, we speak about the remote learning, which is not only IT or e-learning, because we, we wanted to stress that uh, there are other possibilities to study, to learn at home, uh, not only computer. So this, is, was, this was, uh, from the very beginning, our, our, one of our main ideas. So, uh, unfortunately, so I'm, I'm afraid that the click should work or so nope aha uh -huh. okay it, it works now <laughs> yeah. so it was uh, and um, uh, it, it was interesting that uh, when this uh, situation started so the most popular uh, quote in our country was that uh, never waste uh, a good crisis 
And in fact, it, it was like a, a Niccolo Machiavelli in the 16th century uh, used to say for the first time, but I like uh, more uh, the interpretation of this idea from American politician Rahm Emanuel. So you never let a serious crisis go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things you think you couldn't do before. And this, this was a very important uh, uh, point of view and, and mindset that, that, yes, we have to do something differently. And maybe we, didn't, uh, we would not do it without this crisis, but now we have to do it. And uh, if uh, before this crisis there were quite a lot of people in our country who said that, why do we need this ICT things and, and so on, we can uh, uh, live without them. So now they had to think again. So, and uh, in our country, uh, the emergency situation was declared on March of 13th, it was Friday and schools were closed, school buildings were closed on Monday. So uh, our school had only one day to be prepared for the new situation. And uh, we said that uh, learning will be at home via e-environments, so remote learning. And the question was that, are we ready for that? And we had some, uh, some uh, conditions and, and some uh, things to, in, that uh, could give us the possibility to answer that, yes, we are ready. First of all was that autonomy of schools and teachers. So teachers uh, in schools can decide about the form of learning. The only... Uh, compulsory thing is learning outcomes. How uh, do you, how you reach them, it's up to school. Uh, the second thing is flexible national curricula. Our uh, learning, uh, it found its place within the national curricula. So uh, we didn't have to uh, issue some new uh, regulations for that. So it was there already. And the third one uh, is e-solutions in education. So we had online databases, digital learning materials, digital learning environments. We started from 1996. We had so-called uh, Tiger Leap. And in fact, uh, uh, by uh, the end of 90s, so in, in the end of uh, 2000s, uh, almost all schools had internet connection. So, uh, and uh, in fact, it is interesting that uh, uh, ICT in education, it was like a promoter for our economy in whole. So uh, uh, what we are now, uh, what is Estonia about now, it's, it's e-country. So, and we are very proud of that. Uh, but uh, the promoter was education as uh, railways were a promoter of American education in 19th century. In our uh, case, it was, uh, education. And uh, what, uh, as I told you, that the su successful remote learning is possible only in collaboration among state, schools, teachers, students, and parents. So, and uh, from the very beginning, we started to prepare uh, helping materials, so recommendations, uh, and uh, from the Ministry of Education and Research, of course, they have to prepare some regulations, especially uh, uh, it was about uh, examinations and then some changes in, in our law, but uh, uh, primary, uh, though, uh, basically we had uh, all these regulations, so uh, they were not very, very fundamental. And uh, of course, as you see, this is the website of our ministry, so uh, they have very, very uh, many uh, ways to, to uh, support teachers. So as I said, that uh, recommendation, even online trainings, they prepared with other uh, organizations. For example, this is the, uh, here are two, uh, only two examples. What, uh, one is uh, this live lesson. It was today in the morning. So we have a series of, uh, series of, of these kind of uh, lessons. And uh, the title is, how uh, did you go with internet today? So, and they are uh, regularly uh, provided by the ministry, uh, organized by the ministry, not uh, uh, the, the presenters are different. But uh, today, for example, the uh, topic was uh, bullying, internet bullying. 
So uh, we have to remember that uh, again, this uh, uh, this situation is not only about ICT. All other problems are here, so we have to deal with them as well. So especially, uh, I think that bullying is uh, when we uh, our students or our children work with computer more, then the bullying uh, problem could be even more serious. So we don't have to uh, forget about them. And uh, for example, I put two, uh, two links. Uh, these are videos about coronavirus. So for the younger students and for the elder students, so they can uh, take it 10 minutes uh, video. So they uh, have their almost all information about this, this coronavirus and how to, to prevent uh, disease. So we have also uh, information technology foundation. It is uh, uh, it works under the supervision of the ministry, and they have made a lot of uh, trainings, a lot of uh, uh, programs, and uh, uh, different recommendations. So uh, again, this is a, you can visit this uh, website and and see what I don't have time to tell you in detail. So then our organization, uh, Foundation in Nova, we uh, also work with the recommendation, methodological materials, webinars, trainings. Uh, sometimes uh, I heard that the teachers and the parents said that, that uh, it is too much. So that it is uh, sometimes for them, it is difficult to choose what, what is the most important thing. But uh, at the same time, uh, uh, well, uh, it is uh, better uh, if you can something drop off than if you uh, feel that uh, there is a lack of, of, of something. So, and uh, as you see here, this uh, web page so that supporting parents. So uh, we thought that it is very important. Uh, and one of the most, uh, uh, one of the most important messages was that uh, parents remember you are not teachers. You don't have to, to replace teachers. So you uh, have to support your, your students, but don't uh, take away the, the teachers' jobs. So, and um, of course, universities. Uh, universities, uh, for example, again, the, here are only two examples. Uh, the, it's, a, it's a lot of more. For example, University of Tartu, uh, from the very beginning, it was maybe 15th of, of March that they had a sixth recommendation on how to support children learning. So University of Tallinn, they prepared uh, web-based contact learning ABC. So it's a series of, of, uh, of uh, trainings. So again, it's, it's a possibility to use to, uh, for uh, this uh, university, uh, Tallinn University program, it's for teachers to do. Uh, to help them. And uh, uh, when we started, so uh, what was the challenge? Challenge was that not every child has a computer. Sometimes uh, five children in, in the same family and one computer. So, and it was a citizen's initiative. It's, it was not from, from uh, any officials, but, but it was a citizen's initiative, a computer for every uh, school child. And uh, everyone who had uh, computers at home without uh, using, so they had the possibility to uh, take it, uh, to, to give it away. For example, uh, I had two computers, uh, they were good. I didn't uh, want to throw them away, but they were old, I didn't use them. So I had the possibility to, uh, to give it uh, to another uh, families. So, and it was very easy. I had just to put it in the post uh, box and uh, right, uh, I, uh, they gave me, this organization gave me uh, an, an address where I sent and all the post uh, costs were paid. So I just had to put it in the post uh, box and uh, uh, put on the address. So, and uh, the next day uh, the computer was there. So it, it was very, very easy. And uh, within the uh, first months, 1,200 computers found new users. And uh, for Estonia, it's a big number. So, and of course, we have a, 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 a some lack of computers uh, now. And this program uh, works, continues to works. Now it uh, works under the uh, under the Union of the Child Welfare, Estonian Union of the Child. They are lead, uh, leading this. But it started as a citizen's initiative, just 
four people decided that let's do it. And um, this, uh, another group, again, it's a, a civil society. Our teachers, our parents uh, created a lot of uh, Facebook groups. And the, as you see, the, there are by subjects, by, by uh, topics. And, and for example, remote learning parents and uh, uh, every, uh, it, almost every subject uh, on, and uh, in every subject, there were active teachers who wanted to, to uh, start this uh, Facebook group to help each other. So uh, very often state, uh, uh, maybe state didn't see some resources that teachers knew. And, and it was uh, very, very good that uh, when I speak about the crisis and re re readiness for crisis, it shows that our people were ready because they, all these Facebook, um, Facebook groups, they were created within first weeks. So uh, one or two weeks. So uh, teachers uh, knew that, okay, uh, this is the way we can communicate uh, which is, uh, with each other. And uh, this is the networking. So I think that uh, all of these uh, things are, are important to uh, have a whole system. And of course, we are uh, ready to share our experience internationally. Uh, from, uh, for example, within the program Education Nation, we uh, organized webinars. And uh, the first one was in March 20, and they are, uh, they were kept, uh, keeping uh, every Thursday. And today at seven o'clock, uh, there will be the last one. And, but uh, if you want, uh, in fact, if you want to follow how uh, our view to this crisis developed, so uh, please uh, uh, watch these, uh, they are in Facebook uh, and you can see them from the very beginning. So, uh, because we had every week in different topics, but you can also see how uh, our uh, attitudes, our thinkings uh, uh, changed within this crisis. So this is the, the uh, if it is uh, interesting for you, so it's, it, you, you can follow this. So, and that's all what I wanted to, to tell you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Einar. Thank you. I, you touched upon so many very important things here. I think one of the most important thing is the need to start early. Some countries in Europe are privileged to have started this digital revolution a bit earlier than others. Uh, maybe some of us can, you know, get back in track faster, maybe. Uh, but on the other hand, I think one of the most important thing I will take from here is the importance of an ecosystem. And I think we don't talk enough about that. The fact that it's not necessarily only the, I don't know, the responsibility of the ministry of local authorities, but at the same time, there is a combination of factors that are important in this ecosystem, which are parents and how they are responding to the crisis, which is also how the civil society responds to the crisis, to different needs, either hardware or software. And sometimes the importance of having a, a business environment, a startup environment that is connected to the needs of education systems. So you have like local products, maybe in local language that you can use in school um, when you don't have, you know, uh, the, the possibility to go international. Um, but I think one of the most important things also an important thing you have touched upon is the importance of you know having guides recommendations like a very strong policy pillar um, built <laughs> maybe not before but maybe built uh, you know throughout the crisis which i think is really really useful because sometimes even with with teachers there are so many things that you can read you know online but sometimes it's really important to have a you know like a, a very strong set of recommendations from different actors and institutions and Lucy I would I would you know kindly ask you to help us understand a bit more about this in the Czech Republic because for example with us too this has been a very you know a, a very great topic what uh, what type of policies you have put in place or or were already in place you know like Einar said the need to maybe uh, work a bit on the education law and add some information about online education. Sometimes maybe that there was a need for that. 
and what was the I don't know the ecosystem of recommendations that you did for teachers? Yeah, thanks uh, for that question. I would uh, I would like to stress the 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 question of e ecosystem or community, and uh, just one comment regarding the uh, regarding. Um, that is that uh, we really uh, could build upon what we have had created before and i have uh, two examples which is um, something like um, it is a project and it created like small regional and local communities we call it cabinet like cabinets yeah. Uh, so, and it was, it was focused. It is focused on 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 subjects. And uh, the first one, who uh, which was created, was uh, ICT uh, cabinet or ICT. I don't know how to translate it. So uh, we could, and we really could build uh, upon that. For example, we were. Um, in the moment, in the moment that we were uh, looking for uh, teachers that would present uh, in the in, in the national television, we used that ecosystem and that system uh, to to look for these teachers who were able to go the next day would go to the television and present, which is uh, I think it was great. We have uh, found some. I don't know, 100 teachers who are able to, to just go the next day to the television. So, uh, and this is, the first, uh, this is the first example. And then the second example that uh, the structure that were built before is uh, the National Coalition. We, uh, we have more than 200 uh, members at the moment. And it was very easy for us to, um, to co contact them and uh, to, um, to collect um, activities which uh, they were doing uh, you know, for the, to, to trying to ease the, the crisis. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, members like Microsoft, like uh, Avast, I don't know if you know that company, it's an uh, antivirus company. Um, so these, uh, this was something that we could build on. And uh, your regarding your question uh, about the policies, well, uh, it depends uh, what you mean by that, uh, because, uh, for example, of course, we had to uh, amend some laws and uh, change some decrees, uh, degrees. Uh, I would just mention the evaluation, regarding the evaluation, which was a must, uh, the school living exam, uh, and the um, like entrance condition, um, these and of course the university law. Uh, it was a quick uh, university law amendment. And regarding the policy policies that were uh, in place before, uh, we have our uh, digital education strategy, and uh, from the beginning of the year, we were planning to um, to focus uh, on a revision of uh, the curricula for primary schools regarding the the ICT. So uh, it was just it just quickened the process. It and uh, for us, it, it's positive because. In that way, we don't have to explain why we have to do it so much that we it would have happened without it. So um, I try to see positive sides of the crisis, and I, I totally agree uh, with uh, Einar that uh, yeah, we have to really continue and uh, learn our our lesson and not to go back before March. Yeah, thank you for that. I was curious, uh, what solution for the evaluation have you found within the system? So what did you recommend uh, for, for evaluation? Yeah, very, very interesting question. Thank, thanks for that. Uh, well, we changed the decree, which was like, um, uh, which did not exclude the uh, evaluation with numbers, like with, mm -hmm. uh, with notes. Mm -hmm. But in the manual that uh, followed, we mentioned that the, the teachers should focus more on formative evaluation, words and, and feedback. Mm -hmm. So uh, officially, it did not exclude the tra mm -hmm. traditional way, mm -hmm. but then it was recommended to focus more on the form formal uh, formative uh, 
formative uh, evaluation, and of course, webinars and manuals followed the, uh, afterwards. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this. It's a it's a very interesting perspective. As evaluation, I think it's one of the like very hard things to knock <laughs> in the middle of any educational system, and it has been really complicated to deal with during this period, you know, when you have to invent other ways to evaluate and not necessarily go to the traditional way. Jacob, we have discussed a lot about policies and we have discussed a lot about the uh, I have heard digital strategy and national digital strategy and European digital strategy a couple of times <laughs> until then now. Uh, I, I know that we are a bit behind on the on our own digital strategy and education, but uh, hopefully we will fast the process, hurry the process now. So what, how do you see it from a European level? You know, how prepared are we in terms of digital strategies and policies? How prepared are we in terms of joint projects? to work together to solve this type of crisis? Yeah, I mean, luckily in Europe uh, overall, we had already some existing initiatives that were very helpful during this mm -hmm, crisis. Mm -hmm. um, they range from the, the school education gateway. Many probably viewers will know eTwinning um, up to you, uh, the platform that helps teachers, for example, to, to use Moodle or, or any other tools that, that are useful for, for really conducting the, the, the learning experience all online. Um, what I wanted to mention was, uh, is Code Week, because this is also why I am wearing the t-shirt, the, the orange t-shirt, and now you can see some slides because Code Week is a, is a big uh, bottom-up grassroots initiative. It's a, it's a kind of pan-European movement, which helps, um, which helps to bring coding and, and, and computational thinking in general uh, to, to, to people and especially to, to young people, uh, because our objective is really to reach equally the population um, in Europe. And uh, why I'm mentioning it, because I think it's a very good example also of a European initiative that, that immediately reacted to the situation. We tried to really not to be, uh, not to wait any second, basically. And we immediately, the first or the second week of the lockdown, we, we started to organize webinars. And I agree with, with, both, uh, with both other panelists that, that the webinars are a very important element of, of any action because through these webinars, we gave space to, to really to good practices. Uh, and we also were able to discuss within the Code Week community on, on what to do and how to, how to bring coding uh, to even more people with, with this situation. We were lucky enough to have all the resources, so, so we were reusing them. And there, is a, and there is a big library of resources available in all the languages. So this is also a very important element of any or of many European initiatives that um, if something is good and working in one country, uh, then the European element is that we are able to translate that and we are able to really pass it and share it with, with others in other countries. So we, the, the library is very big and I encourage everyone to, to check it out. Uh, later on, we also realized that, that this is not enough and we need more. So we decided to organize um, to, to, to prepare uh, what we call coding at home videos. And maybe, uh, Anna, you can push to the, to the other slide where where yes this is it so where you so at this moment we have six videos that help to explain coding um, and computational thinking in a very fun and engaging way and it's it's both for teachers and parents very useful materials to to use them and to play them with kids at home and uh, if you can go anna to the to the last slide there um, we really thought that that this collaboration is important and that's why now we will have the sixth webinar uh, already in the series. We have also started um, a massive open online course for teachers that uh, if they want to learn how to in introduce coding in their, in their activities and in their classroom, in their virtual classroom, basically, this, this nano MOOC or, or this, this um, massive open online course will help them. Now, in general, I, I think this is one concrete example. And, and from the EU, there are many of these. The important 
thing, of course, is the involvement of, of all the all the stakeholders, all the all the partners on the national level. So I'm very happy that indeed with uh, with Lucia uh, from the Czech Republic or with many others, um, we were able to really establish a, a working relation. Um, and I think the, what Lucia mentioned also, the national coalitions for digital skills and jobs were very important because not only in the Czech Republic, but also in Slovakia, Spain, Belgium, uh, Italy, I mean, all, all over Europe, uh, Croatia, there were the, these national coalitions, which are groups of stakeholders, sorry, which are groups on, of stakeholders, uh, organizations, companies, but also government institutions. They really uh, joined together, started to work together to address and offer solutions. And we were also able to exchange these good practices between the national coalitions. So we, again, organized webinars with these national coalitions where, where every, everyone got space to share the experience and share the good practice. Now, last thing about the policy. Uh, I guess you might be familiar with the, um, what is called the European Digital Education Action Plan, which is basically the, the Europe's strategy in, um, towards education and to, bring, to, to, to make education in Europe a little more digital. And there are several pillars of this. First is the, the making a better use of digital technology um, in schools. Um, and there you have connectivity in schools. You have also the selfie tool, which is a, basically a tool where a school, a teacher or a student can test how digital, um, how, how digital they prepared the, the school or the institutions. The second pillar of this strategy is the, the, the digital competencies and skills, where I also already mentioned that the need for kids, but especially teachers to have the digital skills and to have the, the right digital competencies. Also, for example, in areas such as cybersecurity, uh, such as artificial intelligence. And there, for example, Code Week is one part of this strategy, but there are many other, many other actions. And then there is also another pillar, which is on improving education through better data analysis and foresight. Now, this digital ed education action plan was published already several years ago or we adopted it and basically already since september or october the we have clear political guideline that that uh, that we are working on an update of this digital education action plan and this work has been done um, continuously and it was supposed to be presented uh, i think already in may but of course this coronavirus situation um, entered in march and so we had to adapt. And now, basically, it's the last stage when we are adapting the digital education action plan, the, the new version of it, um, to adapting to the new reality. And both uh, the president of the European Commission, uh, von der Leyen, and also the, the, the commissioners, Gabriel, who is from Bulgaria, and the commissioner, Breton, from France, they are very much keen on having this strategy published soon, because this strategy will help uh, help to adapt the education systems into the new reality, help to equip schools with better connectivity, but also with better technologies, and will also help teachers to, to gain the, 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 the necessary digital skills. So this, this will be a direct policy response to, to the crisis, which uh, of course the policy response was already being prepared and being updated before, but now things of course are sped up and, and, and are moving in a, in a faster pace. Yeah, I think I think we have discussed a lot in Europe about digital literacy and digital skills, but I don't think we have ever, you know, really understood the importance of it maybe until now and how important are not only for students, but also especially for teachers. What I've seen, for example, in Romania that I think COVID-19 has made teachers training really important again. <laughs> Uh, not only from a technical perspective, but also from a pedagogical perspective. I think everybody realized how important the pedagogy of technology really is. And uh, what you have told us kind yeah. of confirms that this is the way, you know, the conversation is going everywhere. 
if I may add one more thing to this, yeah. definitely teachers need to be confident. And it's not, I think many teachers actually do have the, the, the digital skills um, at some level, but they need to, of course, get the proper training and also feel a little bit more confident. Because I, I can imagine that if you are a teacher and you know that all your class has smartphones and they know how to use them and they, they are everyday users and you now start need, need to start explaining them something about the technology, you might not feel confident 100%. So the confidence of teacher is important. And I also think that this crisis is also showing to the parents that when their kids use computers and, and tools, digital tools, they are not just playing games or, or posting pictures on Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok videos. That, that, actually, That's true. that actually, like for the first time, I think, or not for, not, of course, not all, for all the families, but for many families, for the first time they see and they realize the potential of digital technologies, how, how beneficial they can be, be it video conferencing, be it the, the online exams, but being also the peer-to-peer -peer learning, yeah. you know, that the yeah. students can form their working groups and, and work on projects together. And, and this, the technologies enable that very, very well. Of course, you know, all the users and everyone who is involved in the system needs to be aware of the risks. But I think that it's really, we are, we are really still at the beginning of this change. And I think really we will see it in a couple of months that at the end, maybe we don't need to force the kids to stay in school nine hours per day because they will be already, they now are learning also how to use these technologies and they will be able to work together remotely. And, and also they will have the support from their parents because they will see that actually this way it works. I don't think that computers and, and online education will completely uh, you know, replace yeah, the classic classroom. Of course not. But it will be an important element that would add to the learning experience. And it would also, one last point for me, it would also prepare the kids for their future jobs. Because you see us, you know, we are, we are working remotely. Many people work from home. Yeah. Many people need to learn how to collaborate remotely. And, and, and why would we be preparing kids, um, uh, kids you know, in, in just physically if, if this reality is happening now? So I think this is also an opportunity for them to, to start learning how to, how to work in this digital environment. You have very rightly anticipated basically the next area of topics we wanted to address. So uh, finding a bit of silver lining in all this situation, okay, what do we need to keep what do we think were the good lessons from this period? And Lucy, I would, I would start with you to ask you, what do you think made, for example, in this period, the biggest difference um, in your system, in the Czech Republic system, in a good way? <laughs> and what are you expecting you know, to be the lessons going further? Oh, well, um, yeah, as I mentioned, we started the process of revision of the curricula um, this uh, this year in the, at the beginning, we had a plan and uh, basically this crisis saved us like three or four months of work. So we, we, we had so much done, really. <laughs> So that's why uh, that's why I, I take it um, rather positively, even though I know there were a lot of challenges, but it's good because it really showed us what we don't know. We, we at the moment, we know that we must focus on, on uh, better data. Uh, maybe we found a better way to collect information um, in, for example, in in April, the 1st of April, uh, the Czech Inspectorate started a um, um, broad, um, broad questionnaire of, uh, of schools. So we had like 4,000 schools uh, questioned. Um, yeah, so this survey uh, was really, really helpful for, for us and it gave us uh, overall idea what really happened. So now uh, we have, um, some data uh, from different projects and we have to put them together and make an analysis from that and uh, to uh, come out with some recommendations and what to do next. Uh, what I see as really crucial is that we need to have a roadmap or a checklist what to do next. 
once the schools are closed, this person, uh, this this in initiative will do that. This initiative, uh, this organization will do that, and like that, we can ensure that everyone who is supposed to talk with each other are talking and coming up with some uh, some plans and some uh, activities. So um, that 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 is for me the main uh, the main le lesson. And uh, well, uh, I also um, what I'm also grateful for is that we are looking a bit differently on the role of teacher. Now we see that it is possible that the teacher is a guide through the education process, which is what is supposed, to, what he or she is supposed to be in, in our view, in the modern pedagogy view. So um, the, we are, I am grateful that this discussion opened and then maybe uh, it, this is really in the beginning, but maybe we will have uh, like, we at work have uh, two days uh, of the week or one day of a week uh, on home office. Maybe kids will have that too. So I'm really grateful for these discussions to happen and I'm looking forward to what it will bring. Elena, please unmute yourself. That's a beginner's mistake, I'm sorry. Uh, so Anna was saying, has this situation changed in any way your view around digital education and digital learning? Um, what do you think you know, is the most critical for an educational system to successfully cope with such a disruption of learning like it was in this month? Estonia, you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, uh... I would say that uh, uh, this uh, crisis showed us that some decisions we made before, they were correct. They, they, we we um, made a, a good decisions. The first one was that from the very beginning, we didn't uh, take uh, ICT as a compulsory lesson or as a separate les lesson. Mm -hmm. It's a cross-curriculum uh, topic. It's, uh, we, we took it as a tool. We, uh, yes, schools uh, have a possibility to keep it as a separate lesson, but the idea was that uh, ICT is a tool and we have to use it in, in every subject. So, and uh, I think that uh, it was very, very good decision because uh, in this situation, like it was now, so it was not so painful to, to start using ICT in, in, separ uh, in uh, separate uh, subjects or in different mm -hmm. subjects. And, and I think that it was a very good decisions from the very beginning, from the 1996, when we started with that. Uh, the, uh, another thing is that I think maybe because of PISA, we started to pay more attention to problem solving. Uh, we are good in, in PISA and PISA uh, tasks are uh, connected to, to problem solving. And I think that it is uh, also, uh, it was uh, some kind of support for, for us because uh, our students and our, our teachers, we are ready to solve problems. We, we, we never know what are, will be the next problems, but uh, readiness to, to solve them, it is very important. And, and I, I think that uh, it, it was also a uh, right, uh, right decision uh, from, from that time. And uh, if, if uh, to speak, uh, what, what will be the next, I don't know. We have to analyze, we have to, uh, to look through these processes and, and, and uh, collect data and, and so on. And our universities already uh, work with, with, with that. But uh, from my point of view, uh, there are some, uh, some uh, points that we have to uh, remember. The first one is that uh, maybe now we will understand that the learning is not only sitting in the classroom. Homework is also learning. Because uh, in our country now, it's uh, uh, according to our law, it's, it's uh, working uh, students with teacher together at the same time uh, and in the same environment, is it mm -hmm. the classroom or, or, or uh, internet. But in fact, uh, independent uh, work of students, it's also learning. So, and, and I think that this uh, crisis uh, showed it very well that uh, students are able to, to work independently 
And then the, for some uh, students, uh, for example, today in this uh, live lesson, I heard that some uh, students said that, that uh, I started to li uh, like school within these uh, two months because it, uh, yeah, it, it, this uh, remote learning is, is good for them. They, they, and uh, I think that uh, maybe uh, it means that our uh, school system should be m even more flexible. That, uh, and uh, I say uh, that uh, this remote learning is the tool to uh, provide equal uh, education uh, through all the country because uh, you can uh, give a lesson of good teacher not only in this classroom but uh, via internet uh, in, in, in other cities, in, in other, other towns. And uh, I think that uh, maybe it will be also some kind of uh, solution for the lack of teachers. So that uh, we, we don't, maybe we don't have to have uh, a teacher in every classroom. So uh, these uh, e-learnings, if, if we use them correctly and if you, we know how to use them. So in that case, it, it will help us to, to solve this, uh, this problem also. So uh, I, I would say that uh, we have many, many topics to think, not just about crisis, not just about e-learning, but other topics which are uh, school democracy, for example, uh, how, how to solve and how to deal with that. So uh, I think that we have many, many things to, to think uh, in the future. Yeah, the main insight being that probably maybe it's time to reassess a bit how we think about our educational system and what do we think about learning, basically, how we, do we define learning and how do we define educational system, uh, rather more in a flexible way and not in a 18th century industrialized way, um, like until now. <laughs> so, Jacob, any thoughts to end this, like in a very high European note? <laughs> I, I, I don't think we are so high. I mean, we are, uh, I think we need to look at this as a bottom up, um, as a bottom up approach, you know. Yeah, but one, one more thing, one thing that I wanted to just to flag that I definitely agree with Einar on, on this coding as a tool and ICT as a tool, yeah. because this is shown and this is what we are also with Code Week very much pushing the message that that it's not about just learning to code because you should learn how to code it's it's much more about uh, providing coding and, and computational thinking and logical thinking as a tool for all the other subjects but you know to wrap up this i think first digital skills are a must that's clear now and, and we really need to work on this um, because we are not yet at the state when uh, when uh, people all across generation have enough uh, digital skills because this is not only about learning at school but it's also the lifelong learning I mean, you, you, you need much more digital skills in, in today's jobs and, and in, in, in future there will be basically all the jobs or 90% of jobs that will require some digital skills so that's the first element for sure second we need to work together uh, I think the, the motto of the EU united in diversity is exactly what what needs to happen here so we have our different systems different approaches that's that's very very well and and not, and, and fine but we need to share the good practices we need to exchange this is what we are doing now and, and we need to continue doing it learning from each other and i think the third element which we also touched upon here today is, are the, is the role of the communities and, and the, really the bottom up and i i would say that code week again is the exact example. I mean, big thanks to TechSoup Romania for being such a such a support also for Code Week because we are, you know, we see the impact and we see that the community, the Code Week community, with all the ambassadors that we have in each country, and Anna is one of the ambassadors, um, that that this really plays a difference because we've, you know, and no European initiative will be successful if it does not have you know, people on the ground who, who basically will 
will help to spread and will help to you know implement what whatever we agree and we should not be agreeing it ourselves in brussels it should be it should be the other way around we should meet together uh, discuss what needs to be done see you know what are the challenges for all the countries because there will be different challenges in spain and different in romania and different in sweden and then come up with with actions together so i think really communities uh, you know working together meeting regularly this is this is exactly what uh, what will help us to to m- turn this crisis into the opportunity and and to make the most out of it and the best of it no, thank you jacob for this ending on a high note um a huge thank you to all our guests for helping us collect such great insights and ideas to follow up upon i will just add here and put here the importance of an ecosystem and in the importance of many actors working together on both policy level but also on practice level the importance of training the teachers and taking digital skills as seriously as possible the importance of treating technology as a means and discuss about the pedagogy of technology and the pedagogy of learning and technology in the context of learning and approach it as such not necessarily as a as an end to itself. So thank you so much for today, for sharing with us all this uh, great insights. Thank you also to our viewers. This has been Conferencia Escola Panet, episode two. So t- stay tuned to our Facebook pages for more amazing news about our work. And we'll get back to you with new ideas and activities next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.